Every generation of fighter jets explained. First generation, 1940s, early 1950s. The first generation of jet fighters appeared at the end of the World War II. Planes like the German Mi-262, the British Gloucester Meteor, and the American F-80 Shooting Star were revolutionary for one reason. They had jet engines. But aside from their new engines, these aircraft were still stuck in World War II doctrine. They didn't have radar, no guided missiles, no computers. They flew at subsonic speeds, generally around Make 0.8, and fought mostly with machine guns and cannons. Dogfighting was visual. You had to see the enemy to shoot them. These jets were also difficult to handle. There were no stability aids, no fly-by-wire systems. It was all muscle, skill, and luck. In short, the first generation was about raw speed and basic jet propulsion. Not much else. Second generation, mid-1950s, early 1960s. The second generation took things much further. We're now in the early Cold War. Jets like the MiG-19, MiG-21, and F-104 Starfighter could break the sound barrier, reaching Mach 1 and beyond. This era introduced basic radar systems, infrared-guided and radar-guided missiles, and afterburners. Aircraft were now designed to intercept enemy bombers at extremely high speeds and altitudes. But there were serious limitations. The missiles were still primitive and often unreliable. Pilots were sometimes told not to dogfight, just shoot from a distance and disengage. In fact, early versions of the F-4 Phantom didn't even come with a gun, based on the belief that the missile would never miss. Spoiler, it did. These jets were fast but lacked agility and close combat capability, and that became a big problem in the Vietnam War. Third generation, 1960s to 1970s. The third generation saw some lessons learned, especially after Vietnam. Jets like the F-4 Phantom II, Mirage III, and MiG-23 started integrating more advanced pulse Doppler radar, countermeasures like flares and chaff, and a better balance between speed and maneuverability. This generation also saw the rise of true multi-role aircraft. Instead of building separate planes for air-to-air -air and ground attack, now you had jets that could do both. Bomb targets, then dogfight on the way home. Weapons improved too. Beyond visual range, BVR missiles became more effective. But the pilot was still doing most of the thinking. No AI, no computer-assisted targeting like we have today. Fourth generation, mid-1970s, 1990s. Now we enter the golden age of fighter design. Jets like the F-16 Fighting Falcon, MiG-E-29, Su-27, and Mirage-2000 were agile, powerful, and smart. This generation introduced fly-by-wire systems, which meant pilots could pull off extreme maneuvers without losing control. Radar and sensors became much more sophisticated. Heads-up displays, HUDs, helmet-mounted sights, and active radar-guided missiles like the AIM-120 AMRAM completely changed how air combat worked. These jets were no longer just muscle. They had brains. Digital computers started playing a role in avionics, threat detection, and target tracking. The result? Fighters that could dogfight, strike, and intercept, all with real-time battlefield awareness. Fourth and a half generation, 1990s to 2000s. Fourth and a half generation fighters are essentially highly upgraded fourth gens, enhanced with features that bridge the gap to fifth gen. Jets like the Eurofighter Typhoon, Dassault Rafale, Su-35, and F-15EX offer active electronically scanned array, AESA radars, infrared search and track, IRST systems, sensor fusion, and advanced electronic warfare suites. While they lack full stealth capability, they do have reduced radar cross-sections and are extremely capable in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles. Think of them as the final evolution of the traditional jet fighter, refined, lethal, and built for modern multi-domain warfare. Fifth generation, 2005 to present. Fifth-generation fighters marked a complete shift in philosophy. With jets like the F-22 Raptor, F-35 Lightning II, Su-57, and J-20, the focus is on stealth, data, and integration. These aircraft are nearly invisible to radar thanks to shaped airframes, coatings, and internal weapon bays. But they don't just avoid detection, they act as information hubs, sharing battlefield data in real time with other jets, ships, and ground forces. They also feature sensor fusion, 
where multiple sensors feed a single picture to the pilot. Combined with helmet-mounted displays, the pilot can literally look and shoot without even needing to lock on with traditional methods. These aren't just fighters, they're flying computers with missiles. But stealth comes at a cost. Fifth gens are expensive and often require heavy logistics and maintenance. Sixth generation, 2030s to future. So what comes next? Sixth generation fighters are already in development. Projects like NGAD, US, Tempest, UK, FCAS, EU, and GC App, Japan, UK, Italy, aim to create the most advanced war machines the world has ever seen. These jets are expected to feature optional manning, you can fly them remotely. AI co-pilots, drone wingmen, a loyal wingman network, directed energy weapons, swarming capabilities, hypersonic missiles. And of course, stealth taken to the extreme 6th gen jets won't just dominate the skies, they'll own the information space, controlling entire air battles before the enemy even knows they're there.